begin the Karan Daphne, the Sefton Sukkah Daphne and Gimel, begin on Daphne and Beis, but Beis, by the second wide line, by the, uh, where the Gemara is in the middle of a discussion regarding uh, the Yitzhahara and regarding uh, his relating to uh, the Truba, regarding that of Shia, the Nagabic teaching. Shia is corresponds to the Kazakh and the Chesper, to anything that the Chesper is joining us for today's Daphne. Some of these are going to discuss in today's Daphne Daphne and Gimel part is that of the Simchas Beis Hashi'eva, which is uh, continuing the theme of the rejoicing of by, when they would do the water libations, the significance of the 15 steps that would come down from the Shara Nikunur and to the Ezus Nashim and the 15 songs of ascent, the Shir Hamalis, how many trumpet blasts have been blown each day in the temple in the Beis Hamikdash, so many key terms to count themselves, a person should never throw things uh, figuratively to, towards Hashem, as if like complaining, as if you know what God's plans are. Saita is the suspected adulterous woman. So the Gemara returns to explain several psukim about the times of Mashiach. But first, the Gemara is, just continues here with an idea relating to the Yitzhahara, which we were discussing on the previous daf. Amar Abchana Barach is the second line, and the wide line in the middle of the, of the Amit. Amar Abchana Barach, Amr Beiram, they said in Yeshiva Barach, Arba, there's four things that Meschar Talina Kaddish Baruch Hashem So to speak, God regrets having created them. What are these four things? Abraham, they are Golos, where he exiled the Jewish people, caused them making the people that caused them, Yishmaelim and the Yishmaelim, and the Yitzhahara and the evil inclination. As the Gemara explains, how do we find that Hashem, so to speak, regrets these making these four things? Golos, so like the person Yishai. Hashem says, but now, Ma'li no Hashem. What do I even have over here? Says Hashem, like that's his regret. Because they took my nation for nothing, etc. Like it, it didn't even, it's not, it's, it didn't work. It wasn't what I had in mind. Again, so to speak, what that means. Kazdim, we find the Kazdim, which are the people, that it says the person in Yeshaya, in Eretz Kazdim, behold, the land of the Kazdim, Zeha'am Lohaya. This people, it wasn't. Like Rashi says, it, it wasn't worth it. And Halavai, if only they weren't. Yishmaelim, the Yishmaelim, we find it says in Pasuk and Eir, Yishlo'yu o'yholem l'shaydim, the tranquility of the pieces of the, uh, 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 of, of the uh, tents of the plunderers, that refers to the Arvim, to the Arabs, who dwell in tents in the deserts, and they graze their flock all the days. And it says there at the end of the Pasuk, U'vatucha yislimagizi el, and they're confident for those who anger God, asher hebe elahabiyadai, that he brings his God in his hand. In other words, he himself is causing they, 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 that they should anger him because he brought them into the world. So it's like, have God is doing this to himself. I guess if he's getting angry from the Arabs. And Yitzhahara is the Chesil, like it says, the Pasuk in Micha. Again, the Pasuk says, gather the, the ones who are limping and, and uh, they get the pushed away ones, I'll, I'll gather. It says, and Hashem says, V'asher habri oisi. And that which I did bad to myself, meaning I created the Yitzhahara who makes them sin, and I caused all these things. Asher Hariyasi, I made this, this bad. Which, again, Hashem is saying, like, as if this is a bad thing, uh, the Yitzhahara. So, so to speak, these four things, God regrets having created them. Which, on this last point, Asher Hariyasi, Hashem says, no, I made this bad, that I made the Yitzhahara. Like, you know, playing a game, say, my bad, my bad. You know what I'm saying? This is like, Tasha, the Gemara says, Amr Bichim says, If not for the following three psukim that testify that the sins and our merits are really in Hashem's hands and, and the content of our hearts is, is in His control, if not for these psukim, Nismaititirakleim shall sinin shall Yisrael. Again, that's always a euphemism when we say the enemies of Jewish people really mean the Jewish people. Our legs would have already faltered a long time ago of all our sins, but we like, so to speak, say Hashem, it's, <laughs> you, it's in your control. Chad, the same is a Pasuk that we just said, Ba'asher Yaisi, Hashem says, and I did the bad, there's Hashem's uh, as if as if to say it's his fault. Chad, the same, another one that we're saying very shortly, Yom Niram, we say all the time in the Pasuk, Yom Niram, Hine kechayim abiyar yaitzer, the whole, like the, like the clay is in the hand of the potter, Kain atim begim, so too are you, etc. Meaning, we're like clay in Hashem's hands, Hashem, we're, we're, you, you control us, you make us this, you make us that, <laughs> And, and therefore, we don't get so to speak blamed so much because it's really in Hashem's control. But in a third pasuk is the pasuk Yechesko. Hasirasi isleva evan b'sarach. I'm going to remove the heart of stone from your flesh. Hashem says, "When the satachem laid basam, I'm going to give you 
a heart of flesh. So you see, we're in Hashem's control, and again, that saves us uh, because of that. Now, Papa, he says, Atmahai Nami, he says, oh, another Pasik is a Pasik in Yechezkel. The Pasik says that the as Ruchi Eshtin Mekebechem Ogeim, and my spirit I'm going to put inside of you, and like the Pasik there says, what I'm going to do, Isa Shabachuka Eteleichu, that in my statutes you're going to go, Meshpat Yetesh Mabasisim, so you see that Hashem can make it, that we're going to do the Torah and the Mitzvahs, so we're in His, his control. Now, Going back to the concept we had mentioned earlier in that in the previous daf, that about Mashiach, so the Gemara returns to explain seven sukkim about the times of Mashiach. Hashem Hashem showed me the four craftsmen. Now, man nino arbocha who are these four craftsmen? Some of the Chana Babizna Amr Bshim Chasida refers to Mashiach ben David. There's a Messiah, there's the Anointed One, the son of David. Mashiach ben Yosef, Mashiach the son of Yosef, which the reason why the two Mashiachs are called Harashim is craftsmen because they're going to build the base of Megash. You have Eliyahu, who he was also a Harash Evan, he was also a stone cutter, meaning because he built him as Be'ach and Har Carmel, and we also find that he's going to be ultimately sent to Mir Hashem very soon, also to come back again by the time of the Mashiach. And the Kain Sedek, the Kain Sedek, the righteous Kain, is referring to Shem ben Nayach, who is also called a Harash. Because the Pasik says in Yeshaya, the Chazik Kharash and Sayyid, Shem Gracious Rabbi, they explained this referring to Maki Tzedek, who he came to Avram Avinu and he blessed him and he was Mechazikim, that's why Chazik Kharash as Sayyid. Now, the reason why he's called a Kharash, a craftsman, is because he helped his father, the famous Nayak, build the Teva, and therefore he's a craftsman. So there's these four Kharashim, these four craftsmen, referring to the two Mashiachs, Eliyahu and Shem Ben Nayak. Now, most of Rabbi Shesha, Rabbi Shesha Rabbi asks, he says, Yahachi, that's what the Pasuk is referring to. Then Haidadach said, this is what the Pasuk says right after that. But Yoyman the Girsa is, Lamar, he said, saying, Eilah HaKronis, these are the, the horns, Ashazera, as Yehuda, that will disperse the Jewish people. What do you mean? Hani Lashuba also. These are going to come to return the Jewish people. What do you mean that they're going to disperse the Jewish people? So when he said to him, Shuffle the Savior, the Kirsa says, look at the end of the Pasuk. It says, But then these are going to come to scare them, the Yadda is as Quran is to 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 push to push away the, 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 the horns of the Gentiles, and Nights and Karen Alessi that they lift up a horn to the land of Judah, the Zarais of Gaimer to the Prisa, etc. Which as Rashi explains the end of the Pasik proves that the beginning of that Pasik is not talking about the Kharash. That's talking about the Umais. Because when the Prophet asked the Malach, what are these Kharashim? So he said Ela Hakranis, in other words these nations that are going to disperse Judah, the Jewish people, and then you can have these Tcharashim that are going to uh, instill fear and in these Kronis, Liadis, is Kronis, Akayim. So, uh, yeah, they, that is talking about, as we said, the Kharashim is those four Tzadikim. But then later on, it talks about the Umay Suelim. That's what the Pasuk there is talking about. Now, so Amalei, so uh, Rav Shesha said to him, Bahadi Chana, with Chana, who was the one who responded to him, but God is telling what am I doing here in Agadic teachings? In other words, uh, he's well, more well versed in Agadic teachings that I can't uh, hold a, 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 a candle to, to his understanding of Agadic teachings. Continuing on this theme, a Pasig Micha, about the times of Mashiach, why is that Shalom? And that's going to make that peace is certain. Asher, Kiyovah Baratzenu, and Assyria is going to come into our land. Chiyidrach Baratzenu, and he's going to tread upon our palaces. So we're going to set up seven shepherds, and eight princes against them. So who are these seven shepherds? So uh, it says the Gemara, which Rashi says he doesn't know the reason why it's these specific individuals, but it's David Be'emsa, David's in the middle. You have all the Meshes and Miminoi, which the reason why they're on the right side is those are the Tzadikim that were before the Mabu. Before they, they sinned in the Dara of Enosh, like the Pasik says in Bereshit Dal, Az Huchel, in the days of Enosh when they started sinning. And then Musa Shalach was a totally righteous person, like the Gemara says in Achelik and Sinedin of Kochat on days. There were seven days they waited for the Mabu, those were the days of mourning of Musa Shalach. So you have all the Mishes and Musa Shalach on the right side. And you have Avram Yitzchak, and you have Avram Yaakov and Moshe Bismayli, which Rashi says, uh, where's Yitzchak? So the Medrash brings in Yaakov Micha, he went to save his sons from the judgment of Gehenna. Like it's like there's a Gemara also that says Ki Atavinu Yitzchak was the one that he Palgalai Palgal he's the one so that's why he's not here 
he went to save uh, the, his son. So, but Yav Avram, Yaakov, Moshe on the left side, that's the seven shepherds. <coughs> now, Man in the Shemayin and the Sichel, who are the eight princes? So the eight princes are Yishai, father of David, with Shaul, Shaul HaMelech, or Shmuel on David, Amos with Sfania, who they're from the prophets, Sidkia was the king, who Mashiach, Belio, those are the eight princes. Now we go back to the Allah of Mishnah, we said that our boss Salam is Bahula, there were these, uh, the, the candelabras were over there, and there was four uh, buckets uh, of the, for the light on the top of these big, huge candelabras, and there was four ladders getting up over there, etc. Now, the Tanah within the Bible said, why they need ladders? Because the heights of the Menorahs were 50 on the side, therefore they needed ladders to get up over there. Now, we said in the Mishnah about Arba Yolodim, Shalfech Kuno, there was four young Kahanim, who be dein kadi shem and shal neiv esem log, and they had in their hands jugs of oil, there were 120 log. Now, by the way, the following question, neiv esem log kulu, was the sum total amount 120 log, which means to say that each, each young bacher actually had 30 log in there in, of, of oil in of a jug. Maybe each and every one actually had 120 log of oil in his jug. So the Lord says, Tashmah is coming here, will be arrived from the following brace that said, every day in their hands, with Kadi Shem and Shalshleishim Shalshim Lug. Each one had a jug of oil containing 30 Lug. Shem Kulam, may have some Lug, which in the sum total was 120 Lug. Now, Tony Lug, Nabi Isa, the Himush of Bacham Hayu, they were, in this thing, this feat that they did, they had greater might, more than Yosem Ibn Shal Marta Bas Baisis, more than the, the son of Marta, who is the daughter of Baisis. Because Amr al Benashal Marta Bas Baisis, they said on the, the son of Marta, the daughter of Baisis, where he was a claim, he would take two thighs of the large ox, which was bought for a thousand zuz, and he would walk a hill on the side of his toe, which means that he walked by the ramp, on the ramp, very slowly, with, with the heel of one foot at the side of the big toe of the other foot which usually if you're carrying a heavy load, you're running. But here he went very slowly and deliberately up like that. But his fellow brother, his fellow Khan actually didn't let him to take both limbs uh, by himself. Rather, like the Gemara says in Yom that a bull is actually has 24 Quran engaged. And the reason for that is because the multitude of the people is the glory of the king. He they didn't let him do it all by himself. But he himself was able to carry two huge <coughs> thighs of the, a large ox, and he would walk slowly up the ramp. So he's going, minor Shabbacham, why is it that you're saying that the Pirchei Kuhuna were greater in their might, in the, uh, the, the category of uh, you know, weightlifting, uh, for the, the, uh, this, this uh, about who is stronger? So he's going, Ilam Shem Yoker, if you think to say, is because we're talking about weight, the heaviness of the load, it's not true, Hani Kirich Vey. The two thighs are heavier than 30 lug. So why are you saying that there was a greater physical prowess on the parts of the, the young Kahan would carry the 30 lug of oil? It's El Rebbe said the because Hasam over there was a kevesh, was a ramp, or merubah, which is a different interpretation of what does it mean, merubah, squared, or whatever. But the point is, it's below zakim, it wasn't going straight up. Hach over here, Sulam is the ladders, the zakim tube, it's very straight up. And they had to climb straight up, holding these 30 lug of oil. That was a greater feat of, uh, of strength. And that's why they were saying that it was it's unbelievable what they did over there by the Simachas Beis Sheshe'eva, schlepping up those uh, jugs of oil up to the top of this candelabra. Now, we said in the Mishnah that there was no courtyard in Yerushalayim that wasn't lit up from the Simachas Beis Sheshe'eva. So, then we learned in the Braisa that as we turned to the Megim and Aleph, a woman would be able to select and sort out her wheat to the light of the Simcha Beisheba, which Taisa discusses, I, it's Me'ila. So he says, it doesn't necessarily mean that she would do it, it just means she was able to because there was so much light. But even though there's no Me'ila, Taisa says, it could still be a Nisra, and it just means that they were able to. We continue to love the Mishnah, it says, that the pious ones and the men of action, etc., they would dance and they would. They would have torches of fire in their hands, and they would say, Dibish Shiris Vishesh Bachas. So, Tarmo, in the Braisa, what is when, when the Mishnah said that they would sing Tish Bachas, what does it mean that they would be Mishabech HaKadosh Baruch Hu of this great joy? So, the Braisa says like this, Yeshman Ibn, some of them would say, Asha Yaldu Seinu. 
Praiseworthy is our youth, that didn't embarrass our, our, our old age. Which means to say that we, didn't, we weren't sinners when we were young. You do crazy stuff when you were a teenager. We didn't do that to embarrass our old age. And says the Brysim that Elu Chasid Machemaisa. Who would say those things? Are the Chasid Machemaisa because a Chasid is someone that was always a pious person. The Yeshman, I mean, some of the people would say, Ashi Ziknu Senu, praiseworthy is our old age, Shakipra Sal the Senu, that that atoned for our youth. Where some people they, they get off early from prison time because they're 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 they're, they're donating their time they're helping out other people. When you get older, you can atone for your th- sins of your youth. Those are the people who are repenting. Now, both of them, however, they say, that blessed is the one that never sinned. Whoever did sin, he should return and he'll be atoned. So it's both ways. Some people are Meshabeach, that we're good from when they're young, some when they're older, but either way, even if you did wrong, try not to do wrong, but if you did, then repent. Now, time to learn the Brisa, Amr Lava Hila Zaka, a famous phrase, they said on Hell the Elder, when he was happy in the Simcha of the Amr came, he said the following phrase, he would darshan to the Rabbim, that they shouldn't sin. And the way Rashi explains it, in the name of Hashem, he said, Imanikan, if I'm here, meaning Hashem, he's saying in the name of God. He's saying, as long as I want this house, this place of Mikdash, and my divine presence is resting in it, then Hakol Khan, everything is here. Then the glory will be, and everyone's going to come over here. But if I'm any Khan, but if I'm not here, if you're going to sin, I'm going to ruin my divine presence. Me Khan, who's going to come over here? But this actually says it's actually going on a hill, which is a discussion, but in a very simple uh, uh, way about uh, self esteem. If I'm here, Hakol Khan, and, and the true understanding, if the person has to understand, don't have so much FOMO. Right? If, if you're here, everything's here, and if I'm not, then, then who is over here? The person has to, has to live his life like that. And it's the grass to Simchas Beishesh Eva, that's the grass to Chuba. Chuba means to come back to who you are, the morale says. You know, Simchas Beishesh is the culmination of the whole Yemei HaChuba. A person says, I'm a Nikan, Hakol Khan, a very important lesson. Now, who are Yemei? He used to say, uh, Hill. Which even Taisa agrees that this is going back on the Shechina. Lemokim shani oyev to the place that I love. Shom rag lemalichas I see. Well, this is this is a hill. Uh, that, that's where my legs take me. But this part is the Shechina. Im ata tavi al beisi. Hashem is saying, if you're going to come to my house, ani avil beisach. I'm going to come to your house. Im ata li tavi al beisi. You're not going to come to my house. Ani lo avil beisach. I'm not going to come to your house. Shmuel says in the pasuk in Shmuel. Any place where I'm going to mention my name, I'm going to come to you and I'm going to bless you. So again, you, if you want God to come to your house, you have to go to His house. Now, Afhu, also him, which this is mentioned also in Mishnah Sefas Abbas, this is referring to Hill, He saw a skull that was floating on the surface of the water where they had cut off his head and they threw it into the water and he recognized that that guy was a murderer and now bandits got him and did the same to him. So Allah, he said to the skull like this, al Taf, because you went and you floated other skulls, other skulls on, of other people on the water, atzvuch, now, now others have your skull floating on the surface of the water. And at the end, and those who had your skull, uh, skull float, yitufun, uh, there's going to come a day that their skulls are also going to be floating from those who murdered you. Now, continue on this theme regarding to the place where I like, that's where my feet take me, so I'm Rabbi Yechon, and he says, The legs of a person, they are his guarantors. To the place where he's petitioned, to the place where he was decreed that he's going to die, from there, that's where he's going to be requested that his soul is going to be taken. And Tom and Rabbi Yechon say, His legs are going to take him over there, which is a very important lesson in You know, there was a, a soldier that switched places with another soldier, and he was killed, and the father's asked who was the one that switched with his son and he said come here I want you to know we have no times against you because where my son was supposed to be was going to be I had nothing to do with you and the person has to understand that your feet are going to take you where the divine uh, will is as he goes, uh, brings a fascinating story how did Tarti Kushoi there were these two Kushoi which Kushi is always like you don't want to make an Ayin Hara so you say the, the black ones but really means they were very beautiful that's what they called the Kushoi now, but kind of Kamish Shlema, that these two beautiful men were in front of Shlema Melech. Like it says in Malachim Aleph, Eli Chleirid, Ba'achia, who B'nei Shisha, Seifrim, Tamid Chacham, the Shlema from Shlema. Now, Yem Echad, Chaz L'Malachim Aleph, Esa Havukah Atzav. One day, Shlema Melech saw the angel of death. He was very depressed, very sad. Shlema, a very caring person. He cares about the Malachim Aleph also. Amalai says, Amayat Sivas, why are you so down? 
Oh, he says, I'll tell you why. The Kabayim in Ani Tartik Kishoidi Asmach. He says, I need to take these uh, two beautiful men from here that they want, they want, they want these two Bachim up there on uh, this, their time to die. And he couldn't take their Neshama because it wasn't decreed that they should die over here. Rather, it was decreed that they should die by the gate of Luz. Now, Shlomo didn't know this, but he's saying, I'm depressed, I'm not able to get them. So Shlomo, when he heard about this, that the Bachim wants to kill these two beautiful men, Masrinu, Shlomo gave them Obala Seirim to shade them, who Shlomo Melch was king over them, like the Apostles of Nebuchadnezzar Aleph. Shlomo went and sat on the king of Hashem to be like the king, where he ruled over those on top and on the bottom. And Shadrin Lebuchais is Luz. So he quickly sent them to the city of Luz, because that's the city that the Malach HaMavis has no dominion on it. As he wants to say that in the so he quickly wanted to get them into Luz, where the Malach was not going to have to kill them. <coughs> Now, when they came to the, to, the, to the city of Luz, they actually died. Now, Lamachar, the next day, Chazi Malcham Avaz Abkabadach. Shemel saw that Malcham Avaz was all afraid. He was all happy, he smiled. I'm like, my brother, because why is such a good mood today? I'm like, haha, but Asa Dabaymenai. In the place where I needed them, Tamil Chajazin, and that's where you sent them. It's like you, you thought you're going to get away from them, you mama sent them to the place where I needed to kill them. He immediately opened up and he said, The legs of a person, there is guarantor to Shemayim. They pay up the, the guarantee and they take him to where he's supposed to be and there's no escaping that. The place where he's wanted, I said, that's where they take him. Now going back to the theme of the Simchas Beis HaShe'ira, Tanya Lenda Braisa, I'm all about Roshim Begum Leel. They said about Roshim Begum Leel, because Roshim Begum Leel, because when he would rejoice in Simchas Beis HaShe'ira, he would take eight torches of fire, and he would take one, and he would, and he would throw one and take one. The eight negatives of the zoo, they wouldn't touch each other, which obviously this is what we have by all chasnas. This is a mokr for this. This is you know, stam el tereid wanted. This is the the juggling of the fires as it's placed in the simple of the shehima. Kshem he would bow down. He would stick his two thumbs of his two hands. But or it's on the ground, and he would lean on his thumbs until the shaykh was bending down. But Naisha gets at this, and he would kiss the ground to fulfill, like it says, the passing film, Kirotza Vedecha Samanao, your servants, they want your stones, so he would kiss the stones of the Yazara to show it. But Zaykim, he would stand up straight like that, and no other person could do such a thing. This is what's known as Kida, which is written in uh, the Torah, in Kisuvim. That it said that the Gemara says that kida is that you're you're on your face, and um, but the person is only bowing down his his face to the ground, uh, and and not he's not he's not bending down with his his, his back is up till his back is straight. And he just he's basically folding over his body. In the generation of Shimon, there was no one else in, that would stand in Nazar that could do such a thing besides him. And actually, the Gemara brings that Levi Achve Kida Kamei Rebbe. Levi actually once uh, did such a thing of kida. Of bowing down basically from the waist down, just turning down and bending down your face, touching the ground in front of the Rebbe, Vidla, and he actually became lame, which means that he wasn't able to walk and uh, the uh, as well. And the reason is because what happens is when you pick up your body, you're not really leaning your hands on anything to push yourself up. It comes out that all the, the pressure of the lifting up yourself is on the loins, on, on the waist, and that that's a uh, uh, could be it could make a person to become lame. So the Gemara says, "The hugger Is that really what caused Levi to become lame?" But Amr Blaz Blaz said something else. He says, "La'ilam always al yitich adam dvaram kalab b'mal." A person shouldn't throw things like complaints against uh, heaven, against Hashem. She adam gav la tich dvaram kalab b'mal. Because you had a great person that did such a thing. The Gemara said, "This time is that Avayim Avayim brings that a lady said to Hashem, 'Alisa, be shapul chabamarim. You went up. You're sitting up in your elevated places." And you're not really paying attention to your children. Look, we're going through a drought over here. Vitla, and it became lame because of that. Oh, man, who is that? That was Levi. So what caused Levi to become lame? Because he did Kida? Or because he said to Hashem, a complaint? So the Gemara, how the hog Both of them actually caused it. In other words, he was punished because of what he said. But when did it happen? It happened at the time when he when he went and performed this feat. So the Gemara says in Shabbos, when the, when the ox falls, sharpen the knife. Which means, say, when you're going through a Shah Sakana, then it's like a good time to take um, and, and the punishment out on the person. So it's actually both that, that caused it. Now, continuing that theme regarding Levi in front of Rebbe, 
Why was he doing this key in front of Rebbe? So actually, lately, how the metal or the gears is, is metal, but he would juggle coming to Rebbe in front of Rebbe in Rebbe's house, because Rebbe was the Nazi, the leader of Jewish people, and they honored Levi to be Mesameach, and we came for the Rebbe, and we were trying to Mesameach, the, the girl out there, because Rebbe was always worried about the difficulties of the Jewish people, and and the Rosh Rebbe was, was that well, I think Rosh Hashanah was done with base, that a day the Rebbe would smile, punishment would come to the world, because he was makabal the oil of the veil. So Levi was trying to be Mesameach, and he would juggle the Tamni Sakina with eight swords. So again, we see the different types of juggling that they would do. Now, Shmuel Kamei Shavah Ma'uka, Shmuel in front of the King Shapur, who was the, the Persian king, he would do it with Tamnia Mazgi Chamra. He would do it with eight uh, glasses of, 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 of that was filled with wine, and none of the wine would spill. That's how he would juggle. Again, we see the uh, juggling, which is actually, uh, and metaphysically, has a lot of uh, significance, because, you know, Atav Achecha, like they say. You always have to jump up, you know? Is after you read Litzach Aliyah, so that's what juggling uh, signifies. Now, Abai Kamei and the Gears is the Rabba. Abai would do in front of Rabba, but Tamni Bay with eight eggs. Bamla, some say Abba Bay with four eggs, and that I could also do. So, whatever, I'm not going to do it right now, but mm-hmm. this is Kim Achaikish, that's the beginning, you know. They continue with Simple Lich, but Tamni Lich, I'm going to show you my Hananya. He says he was from the Levium, the Meshayrim. There was the, the singers, there was Meshayrim, those who closed the gates, and there was Meshayrim. He must have been able to be able to not supposed to switch jobs. But Shimon Khan was from the singers. He says, "Because you know, Smechem Simchas Beishev, when we were rejoiced, the Simchas Beishev on Sukkos, later in our Shina Beinin, we didn't see any sleep in our eyes over the whole Sukkos." Case at house. He says, "I'll tell you what the schedule was. Shorich in the first hour of the day, Tamash Hashalcha. We had to be there when they bring the Tamash Hashalcha because the Levim are singing over there. Misham Litzvila from there we went to Dach. Misham Bekam Musa we went to the Kavan Musa. Or again we had to go sing a shir. Misham Tzvila from there we had to go Daven Musa." We had to go learn. Then we had to go eat and drink. We had to go down and mincha. We had to go to Tomash Abayin. And we came to Simchas Shaiva. The whole night long, we're busy with Simchas Beis Shaiva. So, Mamish, the entire circus, we couldn't sleep. He says, Is that really so? They didn't sleep? But Mamma Biachim says, Shavua, Shalai Ishan, Shalai Shalom. Someone makes an oath. And he says, that I'm, I swear I'm not going to sleep for three days. So, actually, what they do is Malkanaisa. They give him immediately lashes because he did what's called a Shavua Shah. The moment he said that oath from his mouth, he read he was lying. It's like swearing regarding a pillar of stone that is gold. Here also, he's swearing about something that's not possible. As the Gemara Shavuot of Kaptesh Manal teaches that the Shavuot Shav is when you say something which is false, and you chayiv, if you do deliberately, makis, as if they, if they warn the person. So they give him malchus right away. But he often goes to sleep right away because it's not, it's not possible to not sleep for three days straight. So Allah Hakim rather says the Gemara, no, this is what they meant. Of course they slept, they dozed off, but we didn't taste the taste of sleep. Because we were literally dozing off on the shoulders of the other one. Like, that, like in between, like you know, when they were doing roll calls, dozing off, that was what they did, but nothing more than that. Now I said in the Mishnah that Chamesh Esri Mailas, we said that Levim, they would play with all the instruments, uh, and on the 15 steps, they would go down from the Esri's, roll down to the Esri's Nashim. And we said, because it's connected, Chamesh Esri Cheremal Shabbat which this, we know this Shir Hamalu, so there's 15 of them, that Levim, uh, in correlating to that, would, would, would sing these uh, shiras. Now, Amalei, Rav Chiz, Lahum, and Rabbanon, Rav Chiz said to one of these rabbis, that would, that would organize all the Gadic teachings in front of him, like he was like the Ein Yaakov of a person, Amalei said to him, did you hear these 15 Shir Hamalus? Can they give me Amdavid? Correlating to whom did David Mal say 15 Shir Hamalus? So Amalei says, Hakam Rav Chiz, this is what the said. Shashakar David Sheetin, when David Amalek went and he dug the, the cavities, the Sheetin that we say, which we pour down the Nesachim over there, which Rashi points out, he obviously doesn't hold, like the Mandal we had said in the previous stuff, that it was from Sheshim and Bredesh. We said Bredesh, the word Bredesh is. No, obviously it's David Amalek who dug it. Or Rashi says, even if he holds that it was from Sheshim and Bredesh, maybe he got filled up with, with the dirt or with rocks and he had to redig it. The beef that doesn't mean when David Amalek was digging the cavities, Kafar Sahim, what happened was, is that the, the Tahim, the, the depths of the earth, which has the water inside, started flooding. But Ba'il Mivshta Amma and wanted to flood the world. So Amma David Chamesh Hashim Malas, so David Malas sang the, shir, the 15 Shir Malas, but he didn't, and he had it go down into the depths of the earth. From that, Ihachi, he, he Chizah asked him, he said, if that's the case, Chamesh Hashim Malas, why are you calling it 15 Shir Malas, which is elevation uh, of a sense? 
You're just been It should have been 15 shehayiroidus. How you read this? Because you tell me it has to take it down. Why would you sing shehamalus? So Amale, so actually Rav Chizda said to him, said, Bahuilbad Karton, since you actually reminded me, now I actually remember the real pshat. Hachit, but this actually what was said. Peshashikar, David Chikman David went and dug the cavities of the Mizbeach. Kofetz Aimah, the world started, the, 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 the time started floating. Bahuilimish the Amah, it wanted to flood the world. Amad David said, David said, the other, to anyone who knows, as Rashi points out, that David didn't want to rule in front of his Rebbe Achitayfel, who he was there. And I'll be more halacha b'fnei rabbi. So David had to ask it as a question. Is there anyone who knows, Ishari l'mich b'shem, are you allowed to write God's name as we tin to a chaspa on a shard, and the reason why specifically on the shard is because earthenware is, um, is it's something that would, uh, that would descend and it wouldn't float. And he wants it to, that it could go down. The nishdi b'to'ima, that we could throw it into the depths, so that it should go down and, and land on the hole, umanach, and, and place it down over there. Which, in the uh, Gada of Sefer Shmuel, it's brought, that David actually found, on the opening of the hole of the depths, it said that there was a, a shame, uh, God's name, from Shesh Meberashis over there. And this was coming out now, because they were digging, and it was flooding the world, so could you put God's name in over there, so that it, it'll make it go back down. So like the Kamalei Midi, no one said anything. So Amad David David said, called the Yod Lameimah, whoever knows what to say. Me'ena, I mean, he doesn't say, Yechami Begroni, he should choke in his throat. So Nasach Ketev went and made a Kabbalah by himself. He says, wait a second, I, I, I have the answer. Umal Asa Shalom and Yishlis, the if to make peace between the husband and wife, which is when they suspected the this, like, this suspected adulterous wife, if she's tall or not, that there should be peace between them. Amr Torah, the Torah says, Shemi Yishinich, the Begadusha, my name that's written in sanctity, which it's written in the Megillah over there, the Megillah Saita, says, Yitna Hashem Oyschad, it says God's name. And it says, you should write these curses. So that's written in the Megillah. And that Megillah is Yimach Alamayim, is, is dissolved on the water. So you erase, erase God's name to make peace for a couple, to make peace for the whole entire world, where that they shouldn't be flooded. A lot of this can become all the more so that you could erase God's name. Some of the shards say Paskin, at the table says yes, the Venet. So Kasu Shem Achaspa, so they wrote God's name on the shard of pottery. The shard of Taima, and they threw it down into the depths. But Nachas, Taima, and what happened was, this is why this 15 Shemaz, because the first part of the story was, the Nachas, so the depths went down, Shitzer Al Figamid, it went down 16,000 Amas. Now, Tichazid and Nachas Tuba, when they saw that it went down too much, Amar, they said, Kama de Midli. What do I mean? The higher up, the depths are and closer to the ground. Tafe mirtiv alma. The the world is the earth is more moist, and then the earth is made up to sprout papers. So it's actually too far down now the water. So Amar Chamesha Simailis. So then he said the fifteen is my Moshe Hamalis va'aske Chamesh Alvegamide because it had gone down sixteen thousand amas. He now brought up a thousand amas for each Shir Hamalis. So it came up fifteen thousand. And now the depths of the earth are a thousand amas away from the surface of the earth. So Amar Ula Ula says, Shema Minah, it's obviously we've heard from this, the the Arab, the thickness of the earth up until the depth, this Alpha Gamidi is a thousand amas. Says the Gemara, Baba Chazina, the Kardina, Port of Nafki, my how can you say it's a thousand amas away? We see that a person digs a little bit and water already comes out, and no one's digging a thousand amas. So Rabbi Shashi says, no, how that? Misulama de Faras. That's actually from what's called the ladders of the Euphrates, where these, these elevations that are made like a tunnel, where the Euphrates water goes beneath the ground, because the Euphrates is very high, so as the Gemara says, all the rivers are beneath the Euphrates, and the water comes out from a high mountain, if you make a path, so it comes up on the mountain, similarly, not more than that, so therefore, also someone that's digging in a mountain and bubble that's near the Euphrates, yeah, he's going to get water. But really, generally, the water of the depth is a thousand amas beneath. It's not really a right over there. Now, we said in the mission of Amda Kahan Bashar Elyon, Shayyarin, Mahulu, etc., and the candle, they would stand by the upper gate, the Shar Nikonur, etc., and then they would come down, and, and the procession would go down the steps to the Ezra's Nashim. Now, Boy of Yemir, we have the following question. When it says they would come down, and it says at one point they came to Mala Asiris, and they blew by the, the, the tenth level. Now, when you say tenth level out of fifteen, what do you mean? The Nachas Chamisha Bekoy Asar, that they only came down five steps and they're on the tenth step? Or you tell me maybe the Nachas Asar, I mean, they came down ten steps, Bekoy Chamisha, and they're on the fifth step, and there's still more fifth step, five steps to come into that. It's not, it's not clear what, what does it mean. 
they would go on the 10th step, is it from the top down or from the bottom up? Now, turn about Linda Bryson, regarding this step, they said in the Mishnah that they would turn their faces back around to the west when they would get to the, um, when, they, when they got to the, uh, they said that when they got to the Azara, they would do Tur Turtkiya, and until they got to the, to the, to, to the face, where they, they came out from the Mizra, and they would turn their face to the, from east to west, and they would say, our fathers were here, and their back was to the Hegel, and their face was to the east. We, we were turning around to the, to the, to the west, and because Amalukai name. Now, the Gemara wonders that the Mashmah Shadema, from the fact that the Pazik says Nicheskel, Ufenayim Kedman, that their face was to the east, that they were standing by the entry of the Hegel, it says there in the beginning of the Pazik, that the entry of the Hegel Hashem was like 25 people. So it should have only said that their face was towards the east. Of course, I'm going to know that their back is to the Hegel Hashem. The Hegel is, is to the west, and the opening is on the east. So, any day of Shacharim of Hechel Hashem, do I know that their back, meaning those that our fathers who they are, they were Ugda by the Zara, that their back was towards Hashem? What do you have to say that for? What are you learning from? It says their back is to the Temple of Hashem. The Lama comes to teach something more. Show you poimas, that they actually uncovered themselves. Masriz and Kavim Mata, and they actually went and they relieved themselves. They defecated there in front of uh, Hashem. And that was what alluding to in the Pasig. But as the Mishnah says, but we're to God, and to God is our eyes. And we're very different than our fathers who are by Bazaar. So is that really so? Can you really say such a statement? But Ba'amir observed it said, whoever says the Pasik Shema, it says again the Pasik Shema, Kiloma Maidim Maidim. It's as if he said, Maidim and again Maidim, which the Mishnah teaches in Brahma Bam Gimon Bay, that we silence him because it looks like as if you're talking to two deities, as if there's two gods, Khasashan. And here also you're saying it on the how do you repeat yourself? Two times, it looks like as if there's Chazasham, two different gods. Like, you know, I'll say Shema twice, and I'll say twice. So, Lahafi Amr says, no, you're right, this is what they said. Our fathers, they bow down to the east. And we bow down to God. And to you, our eyes are yearning. So, since it's going on two different ideas, so that's why you can mention it two different times, because it's not talking about one thing, so therefore there's no problem. You can't say the same thing two times, then it looks like you're talking to two different entities. But two different ideas that you're allowed to say two times. Then I love the next Mishnah, continuing on this regarding that we said that we do tekiyas in the base of English by the Semitic Beis Sheva. So then the next Mishnah goes through and talks about in general regarding the tekiyas in the base of English. In parts in the Esam Achas Tekiyas by Mishnah, there were never less every single day. I think more as Mishnah is going to explain. There was never less than twenty-one shayfar glass, which means to say a tekiya before, a tekiya after, and the true in the middle. That's considered as three. So you never had less than twenty-one. Uh, Shay from last in the basic English, but the English even Allah Brahma was never more than 48, as the, as the Mishnah explains in detail. Every single day, there was 21 blasts of Shay for in the Mikdash, because he had Shalash of Sikha Shar. He had three when they would open up the gate, which was the gate of the Azara, they would blow three then. And he had Bateshal Tamat Shashach, he had nine when you brought the, the, carbon, the daily sacrifice in the morning, when they would do the Nisa Chayayim of the Karmat Tamat, the would sing a song. And there would be three prokim of song, which they would stop, and the, the kalim would blow on the trumpets, and the people would bow down, as Mesh teaching set this comment. When they reached a peric, then there would be tekeya, and the people would bow down, and because every peric would be a tekeya, and every tekeya would be a bowing down, and every tekeya had a true in the middle, and that tekeya before, and tekeya after. So they had three prokim, and three times they stopped, and those were the three times they blew tekeya, true tekeya, so that was not. And he had, of course, with Teshel Tam Shabbat he did the same thing, nine blasts in the evening. Now, in Masafin, when there was a, a day that they had a Krabba Musaf, Shabbos, Yom Tov, Haim Yisiv and Teshel, they added another nine, which is for the song of the Masafin, which again would be three Prokham there too. Or Erev Shabbos, Haim Yisiv and Sheish, that was 28. Now, Erev Shabbos, Haim Yisiv and Sheish, and Erev Shabbos, he would add another six. Why? Shalosh Lahafas Amalach, he had three blasts to stop the people from doing the work as the Gemara teaches from Shabbos of Amalach and Beis. And Mishal shall have to be and three to separate between the holy and the mundane, meaning when it's becoming Shabbos, to let people know it's, it's getting dark, and now there's going to be a chiv skill if we do malacha. That was again, side stopping people from doing work, like we have 18 minutes before we have the blast, whatever, so they would do it beforehand, and then they would do it right when it's becoming Shabbos. So that's another six. That makes for a total of 28 on the regular Friday, and, and if it was a Karma Musa on that day, it would be 35. Then you have Erev Shabbos Shabbatech Chag. Erev Shabbos says on Sukkot. Then you had 48. Why? So explain. As we said, like every single day, you had three blasts for the opening of the gates, which were seven gates in the Azar. When they opened the gates, they would blow three, three blasts. You had Shalash Lashar Elyon. 
They also have, as we had said in the previous Mishnah, when they were on the upper gate by the Shar Nikonur, we said someone would call out and they would do a Tekiyah, Tru, and Tekiyah when they were going to start the procession of the Nisach Amayim. So you have three blasts on the upper gate. You have a Shalosh Lashar Tasman. You have three blasts by the lower gate, which as we had said also in the previous Mishnah, when they reached the Azara, they did a Tekiyah, Tru, and Tekiyah, and they, and they lengthened those blasts until they reached the gate when they leave the Ezra Nashim from the east, which is the lower gate. And the Gemara is going to explain exactly why don't we also count the three that we said they did on the tenth step. That would some, for some reason not mention it. But there was Bashal Shlomila Hamayim. Then after they filled up the water from the Shalayah and they returned and they came to the Azar through the Shah Hamayim, we learned the mission of the Mechaz Mabez. When they reached the Shah Hamayim, they did again a Tzkiah and Tru and Tzkiah. And you had Bashal Shagam and Mizbeach. You had three that was by the Mizbeach. Anyway, they would stand up the Arabas. Uh, the Mishnah Torah and Abnan Heim and Aleph, they would stand up that rabbis on the side of the deck. And again, they did a tkiya, a trua, and a tkiya. And then again, you have Taishul and Tamashul Shacha, you have nine for the Tamashul Shacha, the Taishul and Tamashul Rabbim, because the Tamashul Shacha is after the Nisra Haman, they did it uh, in the morning, meaning they did it at, in the morning time after they brought the water. But Taishul and Tamashul Rabbim, you have nine for the Tamashul Rabbim, you have a Taishul and Tamashul because it's down to the nine for the Masafan. And you have Shosh Hafan and Tamashul Rabbim, because again, it's an Arab Shabbos on Sukkot. You have three to stop the people from doing work. And we should also have to you have three to go ahead and separate the people between the mundane Cholamayit and that of uh, Shabbos. And that's a total of 48. Now the Gemara points out, our like Mishnah is not like a Yehuda. We can't learn the price of Yehuda. And he says, Hapaychis, the least amount of tekiyas you could do in the basic English, is you have to be kind of less than seven tekiyas. But Maisif, and to add, Le'yisro Sheh says you can't do more than 16. So the Gemara says, but I can never be. actually, no one disagrees actually the amount of shayfa blast that there were. But the Gemara says, the Machlekes is like this. If you do this, you do the hell, Tzkiya, Tru, Tzkiya, Achasi. He calculated that a Tzkiya, Tzkiya, Tzkiya is actually considered as one mitzvah, and if it's considered as one. So when he says seven, he's the same thing as the Tanikamas, 21. And when he says 16, it's the same thing as Tanikamas, 48. So they're not really disagreeing about how many blasts there were. The only Machlekes is how to qualify it. So he says that's considered as one. So then he says it's not less than, 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 not, than seven and not more than 16. But Abraham Sabi, they held that no, actually, the, the key is considered as one mitzvah and the truth is considered as another mitzvah. As he says, my time is the reason you read that they consider as one. Because I'm going to put the bus in my to cut them true. It says to cut them true. It says no, it says true, you go. So how can you Which one is it? It's key true. Tkiya true, achasi. So we see that you, you say you're, being, you're blowing a true and you're being terea, tkiya. In other words, from the fact that they call each other, it's obviously the same thing. It's considered as one mitzvah. Rabbanan, they say no. Hahu, the pshut lov and now, lachreo hu da'asa. Those psukim are coming to teach you that, as the Gemara learns on Rosh Hashanah, on Dalam and Av, it says utkata, then it says trua, and then it says tru to yisko. So if you follow that order, it's saying that you should blow a tkiya, then the trua, and then after the trua, a tkiya. And that's what it's coming to teach. We're not saying it's the same thing. Yehuda, Lafanel Achrem and Allah, where does he know that you blow Tkiya before and after the Trua? Not to claim Mishaynis, which is those who are Baris, is or not, but it says with Tukat and Trua Shaynis, that Shaynis tells us that, yeah, you go ahead and you have a Trua before, a Tkiya before and after. This is my Rabban by Tamar. What's the reason Rabban that they say no, each one is, con- it, that, that each one is considered a separate mitzvah? Because it said the Pazit Manid, but Bahakal is Hakal. When you gather, the, the assembly says, Oh, you should blow a tkiya, but later and don't blow a trua. I mean, when you gather the people, says the Rabban the Bisa, we died of tkiya trua achasi, if you can assume like you do that, it's considered as one entity, and if you can say as one mitzah, one, as one tkiya, and if you only say there's seven in the base of Nikdash, so I'm going to have a pog in the mitzah, up in the pog in the loyal, but Hashem can tell you do half a mitzah and half a mitzah not. You're saying it's one thing. Why would you split in half? Obviously, because each one is considered a bazun de rezah, a separate thing. And you would then say, No, how who? That key over here. Which was to gather the Jewish people was l'simana ba'amu da'asa. That was just as a sign, as a, as a reminder. Moshe Rabbeinu wanted to talk to them. It wasn't a mitzvah. You're right, but when you're doing a mitzvah, you would never separate tikkun and truah because it is considered one thing. But Rabban, they would tell you, yes, simana. You're right. It was a sign, but still, but Achman the mitzvah. Still, the Torah is considering that as a mitzvah because it was a mitzvah to to gather the Jewish people with such a sign, and now it's some other, and it is still proving that each one is considered a separate thing because the rest wouldn't separate. Says the Gemara, "Command Azla Hadam Rav Kama." According to whom is the following teaching of Kama going like that? Says, "In Bein Tkiya Tru of Leif Klum," that you you're not allowed to separate when you're blowing a Tkiya and a Trua. Only the amount of taking a breath. But you're not supposed to make a hefsek at all. Says the Gemara, "Command Azla Leif Klum." Because according to Yehuda, he says it's one, so you can't separate. So the Gemara says, "Wait a second, Pshit." The obvious is like Yehuda. What was it even your Havim? So the Gemara continues, "Tell me, I'll tell you why." Now, what would you say? I'll look at Rabbanan. That maybe the teaching of them is like Rabbanan. And you're allowed to make a small, little interruption. So 
So what does the teacher say? Ain bain, you can't have any interruption. It just means you shouldn't read a long time. Well, a fuke in Rabbi Yechon is only coming to exclude from Rabbi Yechon on. Kudama, he said, Shema Teshet Kiyas, if you hear the nine blasts that are biblically on Rosh Hashanah, which you're supposed to have three for Malchus, a Tkiya Trit Kiyah, three for Zechreinus, and three for Shefar, as Gemara says, Rosh Hashanah, this that we do more, we do a lot more, is because we have a suffix, what a true is. We don't know, is it what type of moon? Is it a shvarm? Is it a true? Is then we do a lot more, and we don't know the combination. But it, it, the biblically, it's nine blasts. If you hear these nine blasts, it's Rabbi Yechonon, B'tesh HaShoyz B'yayim, over nine hours over the day. Yotzi, full the obligation. So you would have thought to say that really, our mission is like Rabbanon, who, yeah, it's key and true, it's two different things. But we don't hold a good Yechonon. And we're saying, just don't, don't be mafsik an hour. That's we're telling you that no, it's not like it's not like the Ramana, it's like Rabbi Yehuda who holds it's one mitzvah. So the Gemara says, Ema, then Hachanami. So maybe say it is like Rabbana. How do you know? Maybe it's like Rabbana. So the Gemara came, Maiba like Kum. Then why would you say that it's nothing? It sounds like that you're not allowed to have not only Ein Bain, you can't have any interruption whatsoever. That would be specifically like Rabbi Yehuda who holds it's one, considers one entity, and kind of Rabbana, it's not the same thing. So even though you can't do an hour break, but you could take a little bit of a breather, and there are obviously not like Rabbi Yehuda, not Rabbana, any kind of also. Oh, yeah.